guy that came in showed up out of nowhere in the parking lot and started harassing me. Now on 13 on your side, Yuma City leader Phil Rodriguez is stepping down. This happening just a few hours after we obtained audio of the 911 call moments after an alleged hit and run in which he's accused. Plus, a replacement for Charlene Fernandez's seat is someone not too far removed from her. Hear what he says are his top priorities for Yuma. And what the Imperial County Public Health Department is urging so you're extra protected for holiday gatherings. 13 on your side starts now. Good evening and thank you for choosing 13 on your side tonight. I'm Sky Crows. Phil Rodriguez has now resigned from his position as the City of Yuma Administrator, effective January 22nd of 2022. 13 on your side's Arlette Youssef has audio from one of the many 911 calls made after the hit and run Rodriguez is accused of, along with an exclusive interview with the former Border Patrol agent who was the second driver in the incident on that day. That's right, the Yuma City Administrator is accused of being the aggressor in a collision that occurred back in June of this year. Monday, he faced a judge and the alleged victim. The guy that hit and ran showed up out of nowhere in the parking lot and started harassing me. A frazzled driver's 911 call after he says he was almost pushed off the highway by City Administrator Phil Rodriguez. The reason? Still unknown. He started to swerve into my lane, gesturing at me and eventually impacting my vehicle. At that point, I was in kind of disbelief as to what this person was doing because it was intentional what was going on there because it, he was dodging into my lane as if trying to force me off the roadway. Dashcam footage shows what happened on Interstate 8 heading west on the morning of June 3rd. Here you can see the dark gray forerunner getting extremely close to Marzik's van. Contact between the two vehicles is made before the forerunner takes off. Why would somebody be doing this to me? I'm going down the road in the slow lane. Marzik, a retired Border Patrol agent of 23 years based out of San Diego, who also assisted the Yuma sector, says he was surprised to see Rodriguez after exiting the freeway. Then when he next in, uh, encountered me at the Days Inn, he was angrily yelling at me and gesturing and as if challenging me to exit my vehicle. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Marzik says there were a total of four encounters over several hours and another traffic infraction after leaving the Days Inn. He proceeded up to the intersection of 16th and Sun Ridge. I pulled in behind him. I was on the, on the phone with dispatch and I was wanted to give them the exact license plate number. He looked in his mirror, he saw me, and then he ran the red light and proceeded west on 16th. A plea agreement is in the works between the district attorney's office and Rodriguez's Phoenix area council. But the new judge on the case says he wants more information before making a decision. Judge Juan Guerrero also took time during the hearing to listen to Marzik explain his side of the incident. I did some review over the weekend. There's some concerns and some issues I have with this plea agreement. Judge Guerrero says he thinks the plea agreement should include some money for the second driver if he is officially recognized as a victim by the court. In a statement read by Yuma Mayor Doug Nichols, the resignation is not reflective of his guilt or innocence, and they have full faith in the justice system to render a decision that is true and fair. Rodriguez will be back in court next month. We should know then if the plea agreement is accepted. Reporting in Yuma, Arlette Youssef, 13 on your side. Now to another hit and run, this one involving a vehicle rollover on 4th Avenue and 16th Street. Witnesses reported the people inside the vehicle fleeing the scene. The Yuma Police Department found the vehicle resting on its roof after it struck a water valve then catching fire. Water from the broken valve flooded a nearby parking lot. The Yuma Fire Department was able to put out the car fire. The driver and passenger were transported to the Yuma Regional Medical Center for non-life-threatening injuries. Giovanni Gandara, the 20-year-old driver, was later arrested for multiple felony charges. No other injuries were reported. The Yuma Police Department is partnering with several local businesses to curb a rise in catalytic converter theft. They'll be offering free etching on your catalytic converter. It could be potentially a deterrent for thieves looking to take it. A catalytic converter is a part of your car that's easy to take off and even more valuable to sell. 
You'll know it's gone as soon as you start your car. You'll hear a loud noise. YPD says the top three vehicles being targeted are the Ford F-Series of trucks, Chevy vans, and Honda CRVs. As we inch closer to Thanksgiving, more Americans are expected to travel, celebrate, and roll up their sleeves again. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently gave the OK for all Americans 18 years and older to get a booster shot. The Imperial County Health Department is urging people to do just that and be extra protected for the holiday gatherings. 13 on your sides, Vince Barra has more from El Centro. Booster shots are now available for everyone 18 and older. That's right, the public health department says booster shots are ready for folks here in the valley, but there are some guidelines you're gonna wanna look out for. It is recommended that people get a booster shot six months after receiving the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, and after two months of receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Since the start of the pandemic, more than 31,000 people have been diagnosed in Imperial County, and that number only continues to climb. Currently, there are 483 active cases. So for those who are eligible, health experts recommend a boost. According to AAA, this holiday is expected to be one of the most traveled holidays in years. Dr. Ian Gonsenhauser from Ohio State Medical Center says we all need to keep our guard up. This year is going to be the most highly variable Thanksgiving celebration that we've probably ever seen. And that's why the public health department says protecting yourself with the booster shot is vital. It says it starts to work immediately, so a lot of people are showing up this week to have that extra protection around the Thanksgiving dinner table. Protect yourself and then, you know, help protect those around you. There are individuals that are not able to get the vaccine for one reason or another. Jessica McAlexander, a nursing student, says she's received her booster shot and making that decision was a no-brainer. It's important to me to be fully immunized in all aspects, so that wasn't any different for me to get it. And to see where you can get your booster shot ahead of the holiday, you can head to our website at kyma.com. Reporting in El Centro, I'm Vincy Barra. Across the border, a COVID clinic was held for high schoolers. 1,400 shots were given today alone. Priority was given to high school students returning to in-person classes. Vaccination will not be denied to anyone. However, according to the order of the health department, the students who return to class will be given priority. There are vaccines for all young people from 12 to 17 years old. In the following days, there will be enabled other vaccination centers in schools to meet the demand. In our high schools, we have a total of 25,000 students for all over the state. The goal is for everyone to be vaccinated. And the vaccination being used is the Pfizer shot. Let's take a look outside, shall we? A very nice evening out there. You're looking at the RV World of Yuma Sky Cam and a pretty quiet 4th Avenue South in downtown Yuma. We've got some heavy cloud cover, some light winds, and those winds are going to turn to downright gusty winds in the next couple of days. Coming up in your first alert forecast, a chance of rain. We had a little bit today. Sprinkles may have felt some in eastern Yuma County. Also, those gusty winds will blow in. I'll let you know exactly when that will be. Plus, another fantastic viewer weather photo to share. All of this coming up in just a little bit. And this morning, the Yuma County Board of Supervisors held a special session to nominate a replacement for Charlene Fernandez's seat in the Arizona State Legislature. They selected Brian Fernandez, who is Charlene Fernandez's son. Charlene's final day in office was November 15th as she accepted a role with the USDA as the Director of Rural Development for the state of Arizona. Brian Fernandez says he is excited to be nominated and some of his top priorities are Yuma's water supply and taking care of public schools. I'm a proud graduate of the uh, Yuma Public Schools and I'm, I'm very steadfastly supportive of them, um, hoping to make sure that they are uh, fully funded and that uh, teachers are, know that they're appreciated. Tomorrow, Brian will head to Phoenix to be officially sworn in by the Speaker of the House. Brian will finish out his mom's term, which ends in January of 2023. Brian plans to rerun for election starting in 2022. Main Street in Waukesha, Wisconsin is back open after an SUV plowed into a holiday parade. I'm Marissa Parra with the details on this devastating tragedy. 
Plus, closing arguments today in the murder trial of Ahmad Arbery. The three defendants have pleaded not guilty in Arbery's killing. We take you to Georgia for the very latest. Over the past 40 years, you've shared your traditions with us. I, I won! Let's continue the tradition and celebrate together. 1966, the Chapman Automotive Group opened its very first dealership in Chandler, Arizona. Since then, we've strived to provide the best vehicle ownership experience possible and to give back to the communities that we're not just a part of, but make us who we are. Visit us today at Chapman Chevrolet, Chapman Buick GMC, Chapman Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, or online at ChapmanYuma.com. The Chapman Automotive Group, proud to now be a part of the Yuma community. Every picture has a story. At Doctors Without Borders, it's our mission to change those stories. Because thousands of children are still dying of measles. We're there with preventative medical care. Because every day, hundreds of women die from causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. We're there to assist hundreds of thousands. Because in some countries, there are only one or two mental health professionals. We're there to provide support, counseling, and clinical care. It's your care and compassion that make this happen. Picture the impact we can have together. When kids need medical care, they will often face stressful and life-changing experiences. From long treatments to hospital stays, they will miss out on the things that make being a kid fun. Since 1982, Starlight Children's Foundation transformed the in-hospital experience for 17 million seriously ill kids in 800 children's hospitals and facilities across the United States. Our state-of-the-art programs like Starlight Virtual Reality, Starlight Hospital Wear, and Starlight Gaming allow kids to experience a moment of happiness, no matter the circumstance, so they can enjoy being a kid. Learn more at starlight.org. That's starlight.org. This segment sponsored in part by Nationwide Vision, serving Arizona for 35 years. Now. Welcome back. I'm Scott Gross. The city of Waukesha, Wisconsin is in deep grief tonight after a horrible attack. A man plowed an SUV into a holiday parade, killing five people and injuring almost 50, some of them children. Marissa Parra has more from Waukesha. A candlelight vigil once again brought those who live in Waukesha, Wisconsin, together. <coughs> One night after an SUV drove through barricades and into a Christmas parade, killing five people ranging in age from 52 to 81. Four were members of Milwaukee's Dancing Grannies. We got about 10 to 15 people down in the street. We also got multiple purple patches. Dozens were hurt, some like this little girl narrowly avoiding injury. Richard Locks' son and niece marched in the parade, but were not hurt. You think in hindsight about what response you could have to stop the guy, and it's just, you know, even, even if... I was right in front of it. It would have been hard to stop it. I mean, he was going probably 30 to 35 miles an hour when he went past. Police say 39-year-old Daryl Brooks of Milwaukee was fleeing a domestic incident. There's no evidence that this is a terrorist incident. Got it. On social media, Brooks can be seen wrapping next to a red SUV. He has an extensive criminal record. Last year, he was charged with three felony gun charges. Court documents show in a domestic abuse incident just earlier this month, Brooks intentionally ran over his child's mother with his vehicle. He posted $1,000 bail earlier this month. A family who lives here left these candles. They say they were standing here just feet away last night as that SUV was barreling down the street. They came here seeking closure. President Biden spoke about the tragedy this afternoon. And an entire community is struggling, struggling to cope with the horrific act of violence. Brooks faces five counts of first degree intentional homicide and possibly other charges. He's scheduled to be in court tomorrow. Marissa Parra, CBS News, Waukesha, Wisconsin. 
Those injured are as young as three years old. An officer fired at the vehicle but was unable to stop it. We now turn to Brunswick, Georgia, where a jury is expected to begin deliberations tomorrow in the Ahmed Arbery murder trial. Three white men are accused of chasing down and murdering Arbery in what the defense claims was an attempt to make a citizen's arrest. Outside the courtroom, armed demonstrators showed up to the support of Arbery's family. CBS's Omar Villafranca has more on today's closing arguments. Ahmad Arbery's mother wept as she walked into the courthouse, one step closer to closure as closing arguments began in the trial of the men accused of murdering her son. All three of these defendants made assumptions, made assumptions about what was going on that day, and they made their decision to attack Ahmad Arbery in their driveways because he was a black man running down the street. Prosecutor Linda Dunikowski told the state side of the story that the three men charged with murder could not have made a citizen's arrest because Arbery had not committed a crime. She also argued that while chasing Arbery through the neighborhood and confronting him with a shotgun, it was Travis McMichael, the man who pulled the trigger, who committed a felony. Imagine if armed robbers could come in and go, well, I had to defend myself against the victim of my crime. The defense painted the three men as concerned neighbors, worried after reports of burglaries in the area. Defense attorneys argued they were just defending themselves when they tried to detain Arbery. Travis trying to yank this gun from Mr. Arbery, Ahmad's hand still on it, Ahmad's fist now raising. Is there any question that Ahmad Arbery is assaulting Travis McMichael? Defense attorneys for Greg McMichael said he didn't pull the trigger and it was Arbery's actions that led to the confrontation. Roddy Bryan's lawyers say he didn't know what was happening or that McMichael had a weapon. The state will have the final word tomorrow in rebuttal. Then the case is handed over to the jury to deliberate. If the defendants are found guilty, they could face life in prison. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Brunswick, Georgia. And we've got a blanket of clouds over the desert southwest. A few sprinkles today. Can we see some more tomorrow? I'll let you know straight ahead in your first alert forecast. Why wait? Get Break Down the Door Black Friday savings now at Houston's Yuma Furniture. Eye-popping, heart-stopping deals. Ashley Sofa and Loveseat sets, $8.99. Ashley Dining sets, $4.69. Ashley Time 10-inch Queen Mattress, $2.99. Don't wait for lower prices. There won't be any. No lines, no waiting. Plus, up to four years interest-free financing. We just couldn't wait, and neither should you. Black Friday starts now at Houston's Yuma Furniture on Avenue B. His dog is dead because your dog got out of your yard. He just walked up, put my dog's head in his mouth. She didn't show any remorse. He's just upset. He was just upset. Your animal killed his. Hot bench. You've just inherited, found, or purchased some jewelry, gems, coins, or antiques. You're not entirely sure what you have or what it's worth, but you'd like to know. At Paul Benzel Jewelers, we perform verbal appraisals and evaluations for free. So whether you're in the market to sell or trade, or if you just like to know what you have, come to Paul Benzel Jewelers for your free jewelry evaluation. Visit Paul Benzel Jewelers at 234 West 32nd Street in the Big Curve Shopping Center. Children literally dropped over the border, left alone and scared, with nothing more than the clothes on their back and a note. Jenny Day joins Border Patrol agents who have added humanitarian to their duties. Uh, since October 1st, we've had over 450 unaccompanied children. Is the system broken? You know, our job is border security. The cost of this crisis and what happens when migrants miss court. Deserted in the desert. We all smoked in those days. If that was you then, get your lungs screened now. Breaking news first. Extreme weather first. Border issues first. Agriculture first. Exclusive stories first. If it affects you, your family, your wallet, or your health. 13 on your side. First at four. Join Mercedes Martinez. 13 on your side. It's all first at 4 p.m. Welcome to 13 on your side.
A very good Monday evening to all of you across the desert southwest. Thank you so much for sticking with us, for choosing us tonight. Nice night out there as we take a look outside in the RV world of Yuma Skycam. There is 4th Avenue South. Still got some traffic out there, people getting from point A to point B, but not as busy as it was this afternoon. We still have a blanket of clouds over us and a slight breeze around us in these single digits, but that's all about to change. Let's take a look right now at the satellite and radar. There's that blanket of clouds we have in the area. You're seeing the green here. You're seeing down here on the uh, peninsula, the Baja California Peninsula. The green is rain that is falling. Uh, however, uh, we might be so warm that even if it does fall, it probably won't reach the ground because it'll evaporate on its way down. But you may feel a few drops here and there in certain places around the area. Let's zoom into the area, show you what we have going on right now. Again, a few opportunities in the uh, less populated portions of Yuma County. We could have a couple uh, chances again tomorrow for a, a sprinkle here or there. Now look at our future cast. This is what we're looking at for tomorrow. A big weather system here, low pressure system bringing possible snow to the western portion of the U.S. And we have this a big low pressure system here on the eastern portion of the United States as well. Where we are, we're still going to be fairly warm uh, above average. Our average is 74, 75 degrees. We're going to be close to 80 again tomorrow. More on that in just a little bit. Jumping ahead and showing you the, the satellite and radar from across the United States. We have some snow in the uh, eastern portion of the U.S. Also some rain that has moved its way off into the Atlantic. We're also seeing uh, some more rain in the uh, Pacific Northwest in that Seattle area as well. Back down here, let's talk about our winds. Uh, we're going to be in the single digits as we get into tomorrow morning. And then right after lunchtime, we're going to have some gusty winds making their way across the area, especially in western Imperial County. You can see that uh, Ocotillo area, Salton City, uh, getting anywhere up to the uh, 30 to 40 miles per hour at times. Uh, also portions across uh, Imperial County, anywhere between 10 and 20 miles per hour. A look at our air quality index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. Good in Brawley and Nyland. It is now good in Westmoreland, even though it says moderate. We have good readings there. It was moderate earlier today. Unhealthy conditions in Mexicali and moderate in Calexico and El Centro. A look at our current temperatures. Here's where we stand throughout Imperial County. 64 in Imperial, 66 in El Centro, 63 in Holtville, Calipatria. You're at 61. You're the coolest in the county. And Palo Verde is at 64 across the county and state line into Yuma County, Arizona. 67 right now in Yuma, 66 San Luis, Summerton. You're at 65. The Foothills, 71. The Welton is at 68. YPG, 72. Our viewer photo of the day today, Mike Webb, sent this in last week from Holtville. You can see the uh, the farm country out there and the gorgeous gold uh, produced by the sun. Holtville Sunrise, Mike Webb, thank you so much for sending that in. You caught yourself a dandy. And uh, people are sending more and more in. Uh, you can do the same thing. I just scan this QR code with your phone. It'll take you right to the weather photo gallery. Once you're there, you can upload your picture off your phone, include your name. We have some amazing photos that just came in today from people using that QR code. You can also do a slight description, or you can find me on social media. Even drop it off on our homepage, kyma.com slash share. I'll look at your Metrocast. Happy plan tonight and tomorrow. Tonight, still cloud cover around midnight. We'll be at 65 degrees. Right now, we're at 60. 6, 6 a.m. as you're getting ready for work or getting ready to go to school. Uh, clouds will still linger. We'll be at 64 degrees and tomorrow at high noon will be uh, mostly sunny to partly cloudy tomorrow and at 77. We're going to get a little warmer than that. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. Cloudy again tomorrow, high of 81. Again, that's about seven degrees warmer than our average, which is about 74, 75. Gusty winds will make their way into Yuma County on Wednesday. Thanksgiving, a wonderful day as those clouds will clear out of the area. Fantastic, a light breeze on Friday, making way for a very nice but dry weekend. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. Uh, we're still in fall, but we're still in the 80s. Look at that. Uh, clouds will stay with us until Thursday. A wonderful day, a lot of sunshine on Turkey Day. A uh, good day to go shopping on Black Friday as well. 78 degrees, making a way again for a very nice, mild, beautiful, but dry weekend. I'm excited. I didn't get to play much last time, but now I'm here to play and I'm excited. The Yuma Catholic football team is headed back to the state championship game. We'll recap what went down on Saturday straight ahead in sports. Dear Slippery Slope. 
It's me, Camry All-Wheel Drive. Ready to climb your perilous path and brave many a treacherous storm. Come what may. Get a grip, Camry All-Wheel Drive. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go. Attend Imperial Valley College for free. We're providing an amazing opportunity for students to attend Imperial Valley College for free. Free tuition and up to $800 for books for all new and returning students attending IVC's winter and spring 2022 semesters. Winter intercession begins January 3rd and spring session begins February 14th. Visit imperial.edu slash free for more information or scan this QR code. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them Tack Glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, Tack Glasses block blinding glares so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. Look, ordinary sunglasses just make things darker, which could be deadly in a tactical situation. Tack Glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our tack glasses. A colorful American Eagle is revealed. Amazing. Act now to get your tack glasses for just $19.99 and we'll even ship it to you free. So don't delay. Order yours today. To order, call 1-800-287-1705. Again, that's 1-800-287-1705 or order online at trytacglasses.com. NPG of Yuma El Centro has an immediate opening for a technical director. We're looking for a candidate to direct newscasts, do live cut-ins, and pre-produce news segments. Applicants must have at least two years' experience as a director, technical director, in television news production. A working knowledge of video, audio, and graphics production systems and techniques. A working knowledge of studio lighting systems and outstanding verbal communication skills. Please go to KYME.com, click about the jobs internship section and KECY job postings to apply for this position. The Yuma Catholic Shamrocks continue their quest for a fourth state championship in program history. On Saturday night, they knocked off top-seeded ALA Gilbert North. I'll take you back to Saturday for a game recap. Scott Gross here from Camp El Verde High School along with uh, Rhett Stallworth, the head coach of the Yuma Catholic Shamrocks. And tonight, a big win, 31-26. You got it done in a myriad of ways. You guys got it done through the year. You did it through defense. But most importantly, you said you'd run if you had to. Tonight you did in almost 200 on the ground. Yeah, they did some things that were going to allow for us to run. They were trying to take a few things away that, you know, it was just it would be beating our head into the wall to continue on that route. So um, we were able to run the ball tonight. The O-line came up big, and uh, Devin Black, you know, ran his butt off. Uh, it kind of looked like the black of old before he broke his femur, and uh, the defense just came up huge all night. Yeah, I believe, uh, Devin, I, the last we heard just moments ago, 186 on the ground, I believe. Something uh, like that, yeah. No, Devin played his butt off all night. Defense w was big, especially late in that third quarter, a big interception that really turned the tide. Yeah, we were just, you know, moments away from a few of those picks during the game, and uh, a lot of their drives were... were uh, kept alive with uh, some penalties and, and uh, they converted about five fourth downs that first first half and uh, second half we didn't allow that. Um, played our butts off, stopped the run, made them throw. We thought if we could make them throw we'd win the game and we did. That's after that O-line. They, they really came through. You guys were able to chew that clock in the end of the game. Yeah, no, the O-line the and the defense are the heroes of the night. They played their butts off. They did a great job and you know we're, we're thankful for them. Thanks coach. Good luck next week. Brett Stallworth, the head coach of the Yuma Catholic Shamrocks. They win tonight 31-26. A quick recap for you. They led 14-12 at the half, came out of halftime on a one-yard touchdown run by Richard Stallworth. That would make the score 21-12. But there was a big interception late in the third quarter. That turned the tide. That led to a 25-yard field goal for Yuma Catholic, making the score 
31 to 19. ALA would score late, but again, as you heard coach say, it was the run game that secured this one tonight. Devin Black, 186 yards on the ground. It's definitely nice knowing they beat you during the season and you beat them when it counts. So it's definitely nice. We worked hard for it. And there's nothing else you can say. It's, it's just, just amazing. People don't really think we can run the ball. And tonight we had to show them that we can run the ball, relieve the error attack. They thought we were going to throw the ball the whole game, but it's our linemen and our back. They did an amazing job tonight getting the run game started. Defense, they played lights out tonight. All those are some points on the board. It's they, they made stops when we needed it. They made big turnovers when we needed it. I think they had three goal line stops. It's, they, they did great tonight. I'm excited. I didn't get to play much last time, but now I'm here to play and I'm excited. A 31-26 win as they grind it out and hang on for this one. And now we'll meet the Snowflake Lobos once again in the Class 3A state championship next weekend. From Camp El Verde High School in Gilbert, Scott Gross for KYMA Sports. And that's how Yuma Catholic got to the title game. Here's how Snowflake got back there. The Lobos take down Valley Christian by a score of 44 to 10, setting up the state championship rematch with Yuma Catholic. Last year, Snowflake defeated Yuma Catholic 38-14. The championship game is this Saturday at Camp El Verde High School. And the dream season came to an end for Arizona Western men's soccer. They fell on Saturday to Iowa Western by a score of 2-0 in Tyler, Texas. Iowa Western using a goal in each half to take down the Matadors. An incredible season for AWC. And a Monday night football tonight, Tampa Bay gets by the New York Giants by a score of 30 to 10. It's a sure sign the holiday season is here. Ballet Yuma is hosting its preview tea party. I'll share all the info you need straight ahead. Travel, explore, and visit more places with fewer stops at the gas station. Toyota has a wide range of hybrid electric vehicles, so you can choose one that fits your lifestyle. Our legendary hybrids deliver both superior fuel economy and exceptional performance. And like every new Toyota, our hybrids come with Toyota Care No Cost Maintenance standard. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. Now you can get Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month when you get two or more lines. $29.99! You get unlimited data and 5G included. And you get the most reliable service coast to coast for $29.99. Mind if I cut through? No, go ahead. And you also get the fastest overall speeds for just $29.99 a month. $29.99? Oh, I know. It's very good. This is thousands of hours of advanced research and development. It's a better way to mobile. Spectrum Mobile. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. I want y'all to hear from me first. If you want to be fresh, you got to refresh like Subway. Like the new Baja Steak and Jack with tender, thicker cut steak Wait, and... Wait, so you're not coming out of retirement? I'm just here because Subway has so much new, they bought time in this press conference to talk about it. Now, like I was saying, the new Baja Steak also has pepper jack cheese, the new Baja Chipotle sauce. Now he can't stop talking. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra-comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. <laughs> Before we go tonight, nothing says the holidays like the Nutcracker. And as in years past, Ballet Yuma is hosting its preview tea party. This Saturday, Ballet Yuma will host its Sugar Plum Tea Party at the Yuma Golf and Country Club. The event will feature dancers from this year's Nutcracker play. And a reading of the story will be complemented by experts of the play. Business director for Ballet Yuma, Jennifer Coleman, tells us more about what you can expect. 
We serve little treats. We have little fun events happening during the um, tea itself, like the kids get to play games and just have a really fun time and um, get ready kind of to gear up for the Nutcracker. Tickets are available on the Ballet Yuma website and the event kicks off at 2 in the afternoon again on Saturday. The Nutcracker will take place on December 10th. That's our newscast. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Scott Gross. Stay safe out there. Stephen Colbert is next.